Welcome at the SimeoSync 2022 conference. My name is Wien Belsma from Systems Navigator. I want to thank you for your interest in this presentation called Carbon Capture and Storage. This presentation is the result of several simulation modeling projects that were conducted by Systems Navigator during the past years. The agenda of my presentation is as follows. First, I will introduce Systems Navigator to you. Second, I will discuss the topic of carbon emissions and the need to reduce them. Third topic on the agenda is an overview on existing CCS projects. After this, I will present a modeling framework for modeling CCS hubs and clusters. Last topic of the agenda will be a demonstration of our generic CCS simulation model deployed in Scenario Navigator. About Systems Navigator. Systems Navigator is a global leader in advanced and predictive decision support technology. Since 2003, our employees are working around the globe for a wide range of customers on the most challenging projects. We assist our customers in making better decisions on where to spend their capital by demonstrating the impact of change through simulation modeling. Our dropboard platform for planning and scheduling helps companies optimize their operations, improve customer service, and maximizes the use of their assets. As an independent software consultancy company, we help organizations successfully implement and use operations research technology based on simulation, planning, and scheduling. Our services range from data analysis, model building, planning solutions, consultancy services, training and support, as well as embedded engineering. We have worked for many clients in all kinds of industries and have extended experience in energy, manufacturing, maritime and supply chains with over 250 successful projects and solutions delivered to our clients around the world. Reducing carbon emissions during this century. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change IPCC is the United Nations body for assessing the science related to climate change. Experts from all over the world agree that it is imminent to keep global warming within 1.5 degrees during this century. There are many different scenarios on how this can be accomplished. I will be presenting you one that is seen as the most likely scenario in terms of its impact to society. In order to accomplish this scenario, the net CO2 emissions must be reduced to zero by the year 2050. The IPCC has calculated how this can be accomplished. In almost all of the possible scenarios, there is a major role for both CCS as well as BECCS, which is the bioenergy version of carbon capture storage, in order to reach the goal of net zero emissions by the year 2050. You can see that here in the graph that both CCS as well as BECCS plays a major role in accomplishing this. According to the Global CCS Institute, there are now 65 large-scale CCS projects around the world, of which of them 26 are already in operation. U.S. involvement in 12 of the 17 new facilities that were established in 2020 are largely due to the enhanced 45Q tax credit signed into law in 2018. And the IRS is issuing more detailed guidance in how to use this. Some U.S. facilities also benefit from the California Low Carbon Fuel Standard. Credits under this scheme were trading over $212 per ton of CO2 captured in 2020. The next wave of CCS facilities is most likely characterized by hubs and clusters instead of relying on single sink and source solutions. Hubs and clusters aggregate emissions from numerous industrial and power plants and can reduce operational and commercial risks leading to lower costs through economies of scale. Over 30 CCS hubs and clusters are currently under development. 
where multiple CO2 sources are connected in order to lower the costs and reduce the investment risk. Coal gasification or natural gas reforming with CCS is the lowest cost option for producing commercial quantities of clean hydrogen. Jockeying for a chance to win market share in clean hydrogen supply is a significant factor in the growth of early stage CCS project studies. Examples of these projects include the project Puakai Hydrogen Production in New Zealand, the Hydrogen Energy Supply Chain Project in Australia, where a pilot plant is under construction, as well as the Hydrogen to Humber Salt End Project, one of many large-scale hydrogen projects in development in the UK. Simulation modeling is a key technology during the design and operation of these new CCS supply chains. According to the Global CCS Institute, the majority of future CCS projects will be in the form of CCS hubs and clusters. But what is it exactly? A CCS hub or cluster typically contains multiple large emitters that are in close vicinity of each other. You can think of industrial regions, such as the Ruhr area in Germany, for example. These emitters all have the need to reduce their individual CO2 emissions and are willing to share infrastructure in order to do so. Infrastructure such as storage tanks, such as vessels, berths, liquefaction plants or regasification plants, pipelines, all this can be shared among all partners within the cluster. All partners in a cluster have to agree on contractual operating procedures on how the supply chain is operated. Think of elements such as entitlements, priority, new emitters, cost and other important items that can determine the actual amount of CO2 that each partner will store and at which cost. The reason for industry to work together for carbon capture is rather easy. CCS projects typically require a large investment that often relies on government subsidies. By partnering together, the risk for each party is drastically reduced. And last, the economy of scale can result in significantly lower cost per ton CO2 captured. So where can you use simulation modeling and scheduling technology for these CCS projects? First of all, during the design phase of CCS projects. Both during the pre-feed and feed, simulation models provide key information regarding KPIs within the supply chain, such as the cost per ton captured. With this information, key stakeholders can choose between project alternatives and design choices before making a final investment decision. Once a CCS project is in operation, the planning and scheduling of supply chain operations needs to be supported with advanced software that is in essence an operational version of the model that was used during the design. This model can be enhanced to include operational data and must be interactive to support operational planners in doing their daily work to, to schedule the supply chain. So why would you need to use simulation modeling for the design and operation of these projects? As we all know within the simulation world, discrete event simulation is the only operations research technology that can really deal with variability. There is a large variability in CO2 emissions from industrial emitters, as well as energy plants. This means that the supply of captured CO2 gas is fluctuating continuously. If the CCS supply chain is not properly dimensioned, this can lead to venting at the CO2 source. Furthermore, there is variability in marine transports due to weather, water levels, berth availability, locks, bridges, tides, river currents. A third part of variability lies in the fact that the, the liquefaction plants are dynamic in nature and have a limited and fixed operational window, which impacts their operational capacity. The unique benefits of using a simulation model are as follows. Simulation can accurately predict the CCS supply chain cost profile in terms of dollars per ton with a range and probability. Simulation modeling is key in determining the optimal trade-off between minimizing the supply chain costs combined with maximizing carbon capture. 
Simulation allows for easy design and dimensioning of the supply chain, which allows answering of questions such as what capacity do we need for liquefaction, how many vessels, what tank volumes, can easily be analyzed using a simulation model. Simulation, model, simulation modeling can further demonstrate the impact that different operational procedures have on the efficiency of the supply chain. This is crucial in order to convince multiple partners of what the best operational procedures are for all participants. With these results, stakeholders can be convinced of the makeup of the optimal CCS supply chain. Modeling results can also be used to secure the funding by calculating a realistic cost per ton of CO2 captured, including the operational ranges dealing with the uncertainty. The ultimate goal for CCS projects is of course to capture as much CO2 gas as possible. The easy way to do so is by overdimensioning the system capacity for storage, liquefaction and transport. The downside of this approach is that it leads to high investment cost up front that needs to be financed by emitters in combination with government subsidies. By properly dimensioning the supply chain we can avoid creating excess capacity and drive costs down, making CCS projects more efficient and economical. This means that we may need to accept the venting of CO2 under certain conditions in the supply chain in order to minimize the cost per ton of CO2 captured. The CCS solution architecture that is built by Systems Navigator consists of the following elements. A Simio object library for modeling the CCS network. This library includes objects for CO2 production units, network infrastructure such as waterways, rail, road and pipelines, as well as supply chain assets such as liquefaction plants, storage tanks, as well as transportation assets such as barges, trucks and trains. Using this library, we can generate a Simio model populated from data uh, for every individual experiment. Data model and scenario management is done through Scenario Navigator allowing the user to generate and manage multiple experiments. The complete application is accessible for users and viewers through Scenario Navigator web on any browser. Users can get access through this platform using a username password in combination with a YubiKey. During the CCS supply chain demonstration, I will demonstrate the following functionalities to you. How to configure new experiments. How an experiment can be animated. How the realized supply chain schedule looks like. What the supply chain KPIs dashboard can learn us. As well as how we can do scenario analysis and scenario comparisons using parallel coordinate diagrams as well as box plots. Here you actually see the carbon capture supply chain model in action. What you will see here is that there is an emitter in the Ruhr area. Um, their CO2 is liquefied and picked up by barges who sail over the River Rhine towards uh, a terminal in the Rotterdam port. In this particular scenario we have five barges uh, that actually are responsible for the transport and you can see that the barges uh, are, are waiting at certain locations uh, in order to make their disposal of CO2 or to pick up CO2. Underneath in the chart here you actually see the, the tank levels at the CO2 plant, where we can change this, we can also look at the tank levels in the origin port. You'll see that they're most of the time full. And you can also look at the tank level at the destination port and how it's being used. This is for a particular scenario and this scenario that we're playing right now is the barge fleet uh, with five barges. I can move quickly fast forward into the animation, I can go backwards in the animation 
actually to check how the supply chain is being executed. If I check on another scenario, so for example, I go to this scenario, it will load the animation, but now with the parameters for this particular scenario. It's a little bit slow now in reacting, but it's picking that up. Now the configuration of this specific scenario you can find here in the configuration page. So in here you'll see all the parameters that we can play with for every scenario and in this case this is a scenario where we have three barges and the capacity of the individual barges is 2750 tons. Um, there are many other parameters that we can change in the experimentation but for this for this particular demonstration, I'm only playing with the number of barges and the size of barges. I put the scenarios together in collections, so I can go to, for example, the barge fleet analysis, is where I'm playing uh, with one barge, two barge, three barge, four barge, and five barges. Uh, in this case, the barge is designed at 1950 tons uh, for each individual barge. You could, of course, also have scenarios where you have fluctuating barge sizes. There are many other parameters that I can set in this, in this supply chain. Um, but after we've run the model, first of all what we want to do is we want to look at the actual responses. So in here we see the actual schedule chart of the supply chain. And you need to read this from the top going down. So in here, this is actually the available CO2 and what has happened to it. So as I move with the mouse over the time period, every time where you see uh, there's red, that actually means that we're venting CO2. We can be venting CO2 for multiple reasons. It could be that we are producing more CO2 than our supply chain can, can take in, and this has to do with the CO2 liquefaction plant and its design capacity. Could also be that the supply chain further on is not able to to receive the CO2 and that also means we're venting. Obviously um, we could easily remove the peaks by increasing the capacity of the CO2 plant but of course this costs additional money. Uh, when we're actually having these red bars underneath here that go straight through this green actually it means that the supply chain somehow is not capable of, of handling it. In this case here in between here what we have is we have um, uh, a reduced production of CO2 uh, which is lower than the minimum intake of the CO2 plant which also means we're venting. In the case here where we are we have nothing this means that the plant is shut down and there's no CO2 being produced at all. When we go lower what we actually see is the tank level of, in the CO2 plant we see the tank levels in the original port uh, in the source port, you could say, the birth planning at the, uh, at the source port, the barge planning, that is move, the barges that are moving uh, the CO2, the liquefied CO2, to the destination port, and you see here the birth planning at the destination port. In the right here, you see all the legends, so you see that these berths actually are not only dedicated to CO2 barges, but there's also other traffic which of course can uh, result in delays in, these, uh, in the barges. The same is true, uh, there's other traffic also in the, in the origin port. Now, as we've done multiple scenarios, what we can see is, okay, what happens with the results of this? So if I look at a box plot on the results, and I look at uh, the amount of CO2 that is uh, liquefied or I look at the uh, as, a, as a KPI and I for example would select all these scenarios what you would expect of course is that when we're adding more barges that we actually also are capturing more CO2 and liquefying it and you can also see that here so you see for a scenario with one barge, two barge, three barge, four barge and five barge uh, by the way, there's fluctuations in this scenario, uh, right, because we have uh, variability in the production of CO2, uh, we have variability in the sailing, and we have variability in the interference in the different bursts. If I now look at uh, 
the really interesting, uh, uh, yeah, the, the, the real interesting cost is the cost per ton CO2. And then what we see here is that actually the, the barge fleet with three barges is able to, uh, to do CO2 capturing uh, for the minimum cost. So if we change this analysis now, and we're actually going to play with uh, the size of the barges. So here we have, so now I can select some other scenarios here. I'm going to play with the size of the barges and see if I can further, sorry, if I can further reduce this. So you see actually that uh, the barge fleet uh, of three with a size of 2,750 actually produces the, the lowest cost and then the cost per ton CO2 captured is less than $25 per ton. Um, so this is uh, uh, yeah, a good way of comparing multiple scenarios with each other. Um, there's also another way of looking at these scenarios. If we have, for example, this here, I can select all the scenarios and look at a parallel diagram, parallel coordinates di diagram, and you can see here also all the responses. So the more scenarios that I create, I can compare them easily and find out which scenarios actually have the most, uh, most optimized KPIs in the system. If we look at the scenario of Barge Fleet 3 with 2,750, and I go back to the schedule chart, you'll also notice, compared to the others, that there's fewer of these red lines breaking into uh, the system here. So if I change, for example, if I go here, see there's more venting, right? there's more of these interferences here where I need to vent uh, CO2 into the atmosphere. So this gives you an overview of the functionality of our uh, CCS simulation model. If you're interested in the topic of carbon capture and storage, me and Dan Merkestein have written a white paper that describes more of the functionalities and the, the, the challenges that we've encountered using simulation modeling, uh, particularly for these supply chains. Uh, you can receive this white paper uh, on our website or by sending us an email. I want to thank you for your attention. And um, yeah, uh, right now, after this presentation, there will be a live uh, uh, question and answer uh, yeah, Q&A session, so I look forward to that. Um, and uh, yeah, if you want to know more, our contact details are in this presentation uh, if you do not have the time to uh, ask your questions during this live session. I want to thank you very much. It was a pleasure uh, presenting during the SimioSync 2022. This was a practical application and we hope to do more of these similar type projects. Thank you very much. Hello, Rank. How are you? Hi. <laughs> nice jersey. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. My colleagues and I in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, are excited to see that. Um, see? Okay, let me let me show you the backside. Can you see the backside? Wow. <laughs> Terrific. Terrific. Well, that was uh, an all-star presentation, I will say. Thank you for that. I really enjoyed it. Uh, I have just two or three questions for you. Uh, the, the first one, you know, I think a lot of us face as modelers, right? How do you determine the appropriate level of detail for these supply chain models? And can you elaborate on what aspects may require a higher degree of detail and conversely where you may be able to make assumptions or abstractions? Okay. I, I, um, well, that, that's, of course, a, a question that you always have in, in simulation projects. In this case, uh, in particular, uh, we had, in, uh, during the, the start uh, of, of these projects, 
we're talking about the emission profile. And uh, these, these emission profiles are, are highly fluctuating. And so the, um, uh, the idea then is, okay, how detailed do we need to model this? And, and if you want to model them in detail, then in essence, what you end up doing is modeling the entire facility uh, as it is producing uh, CO2. Uh, or when I say producing CO2, of course, it's not really what they're producing, but in our case, we're looking at it as if they're producing CO2. Um, the problem, what you have in these projects initially, uh, then, is that you don't have the budget to model the entire facility because, like, these are large industrial uh, clusters. So it's not just typically one plant, it's multiple plants that are producing the CO2. So what we did instead there uh, in the design phase is actually we took historical profiles and we took that as a given. Um, and then, of course, when we use, uh, we can pick random points in starting it. Uh, but we chose not to model the, the entire facility in detail to actually create a an, an new uh, CO2 production profiles. Of course, you can do that. Um, and um that 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 can be of interest when we were discussing this and because initially that was our idea to also do it maybe not in a complete level of detail but in in a let's say a little bit higher level the problem that we encountered was that a lot of production decisions are being made based on other things that are not captured in the data so it becomes very hard to actually model that uh, and, and then create a realistic profile. There's another reason also of not doing it. When you look at these type of studies, um, in the end of the day, they want to make a decision, okay, how much will it cost? And then you need to say, um, okay, well, if we use the scenario of 2018, yeah, it would have cost this. So then you can give that clear answer. If you say, well, we have a model that sort of like imitates uh, how you're producing uh, in 2018, that is not as strong. Yeah? Also, however they were producing in 2018 is not what they will do in 2019, in 2020, 2021, anyhow. Yeah? So that's a little bit, uh, yeah, I, I'd say that's maybe a long answer, but um, yeah, so, so it's, it's always a discussion, I guess. So it's not like, Oh, we decided like this. No, we we investigated uh, how to do this, how to do this best. We discussed that with the client, and we agreed uh, to do it in a certain way. Terrific. Yeah, I could completely understand. That's always a tough decision, and uh, it's interesting to hear that you have that discussion with the clients and open that dialogue. Um, you know, we are just about at time for this one. Uh, so appreciate your time and and your participation with Simia Sync. Thank you so much, Rink. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Bye-bye. This concludes this presentation. Please click on the back button to access the next presentation.